Hello everybody, just doing a quick video to show some of the issues I'm having with scrapping um, items from the Sanguinaire mod. Noticeably, vampire armors and stuff like that that you pick up off the um, vampire corpses and feral corpses and stuff like that. I have got some here on the ground in my sanctuary, in my settlement. This is Starlight Driving. And I've dropped a few items here on the ground because on the um, post forum, someone suggested that the way to scrap the items was to chuck them on the ground, enter the build menu within the game, takes a few seconds, and uh, scrap the items from the build menu. I can't. And I'm using scrap everything. And if I can't scrap something in game, when you've got scrap everything installed, then there's a problem with how the item has been set up. And I think it's because the items don't have any, you know, component list. They've, they've not been, you know, set up to show what they're, they're made of, what they break down into. Um, if I enable extra object selection in, um, in the place everywhere mod, I can scrap the items then but it's not going to give me any materials. And clearly, if you're not using mods, then you're not able to scrap the items here. So you can't chuck the items on the ground and scrap them. So then the obvious thing is, well, go to your armor bench and scrap them there, you know? The mod author says they've been set up in the same way as, you know, they're just using the same supposedly properties as the armors that they're based on and if I go into my inventory quickly and show you the apparel list you can see I've got 10 scruffy vampire clothes 10 vampire outfits 10 vampire master outfits and 10 vampire leathers all sitting in my inventory go to my armor workbench go to craft and they don't even appear they don't even show up in my inventory so I can't scrap them from there either but it's like well what do you do with these items then how do you get rid of them well you could sell them to a vendor I suppose that's one way of getting rid of them if you acquire a lot of them uh, although vendors won't pay a great deal for them someone says oh well you put them through the um, contraptions DLC you know if you've got yourself a uh, Know, an armor disassembler you can chuck them in there and it'll scrap them it doesn't because again there's no there's no um breakdown list doesn't know what to do with them so i actually installed the better manufacturing mod in the game and then using that mod author's instructions i've been able to make a compatibility patch so at least I can chuck the armors into the um, disassembler and they will get broken down now. But it only works if you have better manufacturing installed and you make your own patch. There's no vanilla support. And I've had to do this anyway because I was working through, I was making a compatibility patch anyway because obviously Creation Club armor, and ooh. It does glitch a bit. Sometimes it looks like it's spitting out an armor, but it doesn't. But you can see I'm getting leather and cloth being broken down from the items as they end up in the um, disassembler. So vampire scruffy clothes, vampire outfits, and it'll chuck them all in, it'll break them all down, and then it'll spit out the materials, which will come through here. Obviously, these items, you can't upgrade them, you can't modify them in any way because they've not been set up to be modifiable. So they don't have any, like, mods, armor mods or anything like that on them. So there won't be any mods coming out, little, you know, the little yellow mod boxes, which would then come into my mod recycler and get broken down into components. So when this basically spits out the leather and cloth in a few moments' time, that will just travel along here and end up in my bit conveyor workshop storage and it will be transferred automatically 
back to the workshop bin over there. And that's basically what happens. All my armor that I pick up on my travels as I'm adventuring around the um, Commonwealth and when I do my settlement beacons and my, you know, my um, beacon response teams bring their deliveries and chuck them into and deliver all the stuff to the workshop. It gets put in there and this machine will go and chew through everything and um, basically spit out the um, components. And obviously I've got one set up for weapons, so all the weapons I pick up off corpses and loot off things, that gets done via this machine over here, the uh, weapon disassembler. And again, once the weapons get broken down, any mods on any weapons, they pass through here and get broken down, then all the components end up in here and go back to the workshop where I can use them for building other things. Yeah, it's just going to sit there, look, and chew through. It'll basically chew through all the armor. So again, like the vampire outfits, it's breaking those down at the minute. And then it will do the vampire levers and scruffy clothes and everything like that. And then once it's broken everything down, it'll spit out the components. But before I made the patch, what would happen is all the um, vampire armor would come in here and because the machine obviously didn't know what to break it down into and what to scrap it to, it just sat here and clogged the machine up. So then the machine wouldn't do anything. So any other armor, you know, vanilla game armor and stuff like that, would then just just it would just back up. Nothing would happen. Nothing would come out of the machine because it would get stuck behind all the vampire armor. But my compatibility patch that I've made in Fallout 4 Edit fixes that and as I say it also enables me to scrap like the creation club content from like the the branded attire so things like the nuka shirts captain cosmos shirts things like that anything added by the creation club any weapons armor I've done a patch for for my own game so I can scrap everything and that'll run quite happily as I say until it's scrapped everything but it's a bit disappointing that you can't scrap the armor at the armor workbench like all standard regular armors and if you drop an armor on the ground you can't um when i drop dropping this oh no i've equipped it drop that on the ground quickly and uh so if i go into the workshop menu See, I've got straight away the option comes up to scrap it and it will give me the list of components so yeah there's definitely some, for some reason whatever however the obviously mod author and he's he's a fantastic bloke um, who's who's done the sanguinaire mod he's, he did the same for he did the same mod for um, Skyrim special edition which is a fantastic mod I had spent quite a bit of time playing that this year and he's, he's now brought a version of Sanguinaire with a different take on vampirism to Fallout 4. And it's um it's very good. But it was just one of them little things that I noticed. I, I end up gathering and collecting so many of the vampire outfits and clothing off of bodies as I'm travelling around the wasteland doing my quests and exploring and adventuring. And then I couldn't do anything with them. I couldn't scrap them. I couldn't recycle them. I just ended up getting bogged down by them. <laughs> so, it's not a problem now. I can salvage all the items using my own, um, like, say, patch. But it would be nice if the mod author could have a look at fixing it so you can actually scrap the items either via the armor bench or via dropping in a settlement and via the, um, the build menu. Because not a lot of people are going to want to install um, better manufacturing or uh, manufacturing extended mods and then have to go through Fallout 4 edit, creating your own compatibility patch. Like I say, it's going, it's crushing everything. I'm going to end up with a lot of leather and a lot of cloth coming out. So that that's working quite well. <laughs> Never... I notice my conveyor belts aren't animated. I wonder why that is. Switch that off for a second. There we 
go. Now they're animated. Eventually, as I say, once it's finished scrapping all the clothing, and you'll have to uh, uh, forgive the um, Z flickering of some of the textures, it's again do with any my, the any settings disabling um, um, combined meshes and pre-called meshes and textures and stuff like that to enable you know you to scrap more stuff around settlements and I've got mods which obviously like Starlight Driving if I go into the build menu obviously Starlight Driving's been quite expanded it's a lot much bigger area you can build into now come all the way out here outside the fence and you'll have to forgive the little pause while my game does an auto save but yeah the mod that does that um that allows that to happen and basically lets you come all, obviously all the way out here and travel all the way over to here oh and uh i can actually um scrap I, I know in my comment I said there was a bit of confusion about being able to... Obviously, I can scrap ghouls and bodies and stuff like that. That's not a problem. And scrapping, like, the vampires' remains and their corpses is not an issue. Um, but as I say, scrapping anything that they were wearing, their armour and stuff, that's what I can't do in the game <laughs> and with the mods I'm running. So here we go. Our leather is coming out of the machine, so it's finished breaking down all the vampire armour, near enough. A couple of bits left it hasn't done, but it will do it. So yeah, I've I found a slight workaround to get rid of all the um, armour and materials that I'm gathering. But that's the only way to do it. You can't do it via the normal methods, either at your armour workbench or from the the settlement build menu. I don't know why. Without digging too deeply into the author's mod, which I'm not going to do because obviously he's still in the process of developing it and he's doing updates. In fact, he's, he's released an update today which addresses the issue of um, power armor not providing your vampires with protection from that horrible yellow thing up there, which obviously gives you massive amounts of radiation per second and kills you if you're a vampire so he's fixed that he's, he's added the vampire he's added the um, sun protection to power armor so if you are caught outside in the daytime like if I my character was a vampire now I would only be able to be out here if I was wearing a set of power armor otherwise I'd be taking lots of radiation per second and I would be dying and I would die, I would combust. But at the minute I've rolled back my save anyways to pre-turning into a vampire because um, obviously for when I'm streaming and doing my videos and stuff, having to hang around for large, large periods of time in certain locations to avoid the sun means you can't actually do stuff. It's not very entertaining to watch. For someone playing on their own and role playing as a, a vampire character, it would be it's 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 a great mod. But certainly because I play it at a reduced time scale anyway, being stuck in and you can, I, when I say indoors, I don't just mean going into a settlement building like like here if I shut the door. Although I'm technically indoors, I would still be taking radiation damage because the game engine doesn't apparently allow for light level detection. So the only way to actually get out of the sun is to go into a somewhere that actually causes like the load scene. So going into a building that triggers a an actual load screen, a cell change. So none of these, none of the settlement buildings um, give you protection from the sun. Including, because I originally when I did my vampire and I turned into a vampire, I was like, where do I go? And the nearest place I can go here if I'm at Sunlight Tidings is um, back to Concord back to Concord into the Museum of Freedom that's the only place 
near here. Unless I go, obviously, somewhere really ridiculous, like into Lexington. And I go maybe into, I think, the laundromat. The laundromat has a cell change, as do the apartments. And obviously, the Corvega factory has a cell change. So I could go there. Otherwise, somewhere here, out in the open. You now, in these areas of the map, there's probably not a lot of places you can go and trigger a um, cell change. USAF station is one place where there's a cell change. Um, the vault will give you a cell change. Um, none of those do. None of these areas. Sanctuary doesn't have any except for the underground bunker thing behind one of the houses. And obviously I've got the Dr. Mobius's cellar installed so I can travel there if I'm at Sanctuary. But Grey Garden, nowhere to hide. Jalbert Brothers Disposal, no. Rocky Narrows Park, no. Arc Jet, you could go into Arc Jet, I suppose, and that would get you out of the sun. But again, all these other places, you don't get any radiation protection from any of them. Oberlin Station, Relay Tower, Fiddler's Green, nope. No radiation protection there in any of those buildings. You, obviously, if you're in, in Boston, obviously you've got Diamond Diamond City? Hmm, maybe some of the buildings in Diamond City. Like the church and public occurrences and places like that would probably give you some protection. And obviously some of these other a lot of these other buildings will give you protection when you travel into them. So yeah, playing as a vampire if you kind of restrict yourself to the city is probably okay. But for someone like me who tends to stay in and do settlement building out of the city, it's very hard to play as a vampire. Because none of the settlements require you to go into a load screen and a cell transition, which means you don't get any sun protection. But like I say, it's still spitting out. Yeah, it's still spitting out all my level up. So that takes a while. I can just leave that running. And eventually it'll finish doing what it's doing. So yeah, I just wanted to do this quick video just to show everybody. And certainly I'm going to post this on the on the um, the thread on the um, Nexus site for the mod, just so that the mod author can see the issue and get a better understanding of it. Because sometimes when we're typing posts on message boards, things get lost in translation. At least when you can see things firsthand and understand the problem. He could probably fix it a lot quicker <laughs> than me. <laughs> you know, I can do little things in Fallout 4 edit and make compatibility patches and fix some bits and bobs. But I'm not about to start downloading the creation kit and the Bethesda.net launcher so I can install the creation kit to start opening up other people's mods and trying to change things in mods, you know. Let the mod authors look after maintain their mods. So yeah. So that's that's work. As I say, better manufacturing, you can the mod author of better manufacturing has an article on their mod page which tells you how to make um um like a patch for custom armors and weapons. Because obviously one of the other things as well, like I'm using the, um, what was it, the Varmint Rifle mod, um, the Handmade Revolver mod, and I think the Crude Blowback Rifle. So I've got, I'm using three weapon mods basically, they're the only three like standalone mod created weapons that I'm using. And um, if I chuck them in the weapon hopper thing, they don't get scrapped. They'll come through here, they won't get scrapped because it's not set up to scrap those yet. So I've got to create um, a, a patch for those three weapons. But that's obviously more complicated than obviously doing the one for the vampire armor and the um, creation club clothing because obviously the weapons have um, have mods on them. You know, they've got like hair triggers and stuff like that. So then you need to set up um, the leveled list for the mods as well. 
So it's like if you go here, let's have a look at my handmade revolver. So yeah, you've got the 308 receivers. You've got to set up all the receivers, all the different barrels, all the different stocks, all the different scopes, compensators, and the legendaries. You've got to go do that for all three weapons, the blowback and obviously the um, varmint rifle, wherever that is. I had one somewhere. But yeah, receivers, barrels, magazines, buzzle brakes, stuff like that. As, and obviously this one's got the um, the tape and the, the paint job as well. So again, all those have to be set up and added manually to a list so that basically the machine can take those mods off and put them in obviously the, 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 the little yellow mod boxes and then they come through to the, the mod recycler where then the mod recycler will scrap those receivers, barrels, etc. into components. So again, I've got to go through, see what it's going to cost to make a receiver or a barrel and then obviously set that up in Fallout 4 edit in a list so that I get the, the components back when we recycle stuff and then then I'm quite happy then this 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 profile in vortex is set up my um sanguinaire vampire playthrough I can just activate this profile and I everything's hunky dory there's no conflict the great thing about sanguinaire mod it doesn't really it doesn't conflict with anything else you know when I opened up Fallout 4 edit loaded up my um mod load order there's no um no um conflicts with it because it's all standalone stuff it's not doesn't touch or interfere with any the vanilla game stuff at all uh, about the only the only thing i did notice is obviously when you go into like some things like the perk menu for example um it obviously like big leagues for vampires vampiric well wielding now increased weapon speed by blah 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 and obviously things wet so you will find that probably conflicts if you have a bunch of any mods which affect the perk tree or change perk requirements or something like that you'll you might notice perk names that's about the only conflict the text yeah yeah you know otherwise that's that's it not problem again you make a merge like i've made a merge patch with fallout 4 edit so get to keep all the um changes so i have no issues like i say the only thing i notice in the game is textures textures flickering because of the um expanded settlements and the build high build higher expanded settlements mod and the um fact i'm also using the boston fps fix mod which the two do boss what the boss they kind of work against each other basically boston fps tries to make everything like this building here would be one one object whereas obviously the build high everything settlement thing makes it so that this building is actually loads of separate little bits look you've got diner counters Diner corners, you know, you've got diner wall, um, projector, driving ramp, and everything like that. Whereas, obviously, the Boston FPS fix mod tries to make that one object. So you're only loading one thing into your game. But yeah. So, there we go. Anyway, I just wanted to do this quick video. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling a bit because I've been out this morning. I had to go do some medical stuff and things, which... And obviously, I will be on to Twitch later this evening. Carrying on my Horizon playthrough. If people want to see me doing the Sanguinaire playthrough and starting a new character and doing the whole vampire thing, let me know in the comment section below. And um, I will think about doing that as a separate series. But for now, from me, it's goodbye. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.